Connected Voice Journey Podcast. Your voice is your medicine. Welcome to this, the very first episode of the Reconnected Voice Journey podcast. I'm your host, Francesca J. Littman, and I've created this podcast to dedicate it to exploring the voice in many different forms. So that would be from the way that we express ourselves in the world through our speaking voice, our singing voice, um, and also our creativity to the words that we use to speak to ourselves, the stories that we tell ourselves, the stories that we tell others, um, the voice of our intuition, our inner guidance, the voice of nature, and also the voice of divine guidance, those things that come to us from seemingly nowhere. And yet that we have a deep knowing is, is guidance that, that comes from something much greater than ourselves and that needs to be listened to. So the intention of this podcast is to offer you inspiration and hope as well as you embark on your own unique journey to reclaim all aspects of your voice, to build trust in the immense power that already lies within you. I know from speaking to a lot of people, women in particular, that um, so many of us hold issues within our voice, the things that we just, we find it very difficult to speak up or to really claim, claim ourselves, to claim our space, to say no, to say yes to ourselves and so many other aspects. So I'm really hoping that you will be able to take something from this podcast to help you to truly build the most loving and empowered relationship with your voice possible. I will be sharing my own experiences on my path. I'll be sharing my personal stories with you, um, the things that have led me to be doing this work, um, my, my own journey of reconnection with my voice, which is ongoing. And it's, it's really a lifelong process as I see it. And I will also be talking with guest speakers, people who I will be picking um, because I'm inspired by their stories and because I feel that they've got something really powerful to share with you. And I will also be sharing here and there some of the tips that I've, well, yeah, some of the tools, tips, things that I picked up along the way, things that I am hoping that you will find really useful to help you in developing and expanding your relationship with your voice. So before I go any further, I want to share with you just a little bit about my background. I refer to myself as a voice and sound alchemist. I work with sound as well as, as with a voice. I have a background, um, originally my first career was as a singing teacher and I had this little voice inside of me that for such a long time was telling me that there was more out there and eventually one day I found the courage to listen to that calling and I went on to travel and to discover energy healing and then along the lines of energy healing and the voice sort of merged into one and now I work with the voice as I say in its many many different forms because it does come in so many different forms and I support others in reclaiming their voice to rebuild that connection with their voice that we all come into this world with we we all enter this world with just this immense joy with when we discover our voices for the first time I remember when my son was was little I don't remember exactly how old he was but maybe six months or he, he could have been younger could have been older but I remember very distinctly the the morning when instead of waking up crying he started exploring his voice just all these different sounds that he could create and if you look at the way that small children interact in the world they really say what they feel or they express themselves the emotions that they feel and it's only when we are taught that it's not safe to express our emotions. We're told to stop making noise or stop making sound or to not say certain things, not to voice our opinion, not to voice our truth, to voice what we see. We start to disconnect from our voice. And there is also so much that goes back in our collective history 
that is impacting us at this very time in our voices, not just on a personal level. I mean, we do obviously experience it personally, but it's so much more than our own stories. We're also carrying the stories of so many who have come before us. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that momentarily. But to go back to the the work and the concept of a voice alchemist, um, I truly believe that within each of us we we have our own gold we have the power to to create that um through our voices through the words we speak and how we express ourselves in the world and also using our singing voices as well so many people are cut off from their singing voice and it is an absolutely integral important essential part of who we are and of our, our personal expression. So that's a little bit about what I do. And as this podcast develops, I'm sure that you'll learn more about that. Um, anyway, so to get on to what I started talking about in terms of our, our collective history with voice. So all of us at some point in our family history, we will have had ancestors who have had the power of their voice and their expression taken away from them. This is not something that will have happened to just a few people, but really, if we go right the way back, in every situation there will have been ancestors who were not able to express themselves. And these traumas become locked within the the DNA that passed on through us. So if we look at the the voice in yeah like going far far back in history um we look for example at the emergence of the abrahamic religions that they really really silenced the feminine voice as a very patriarchal society developed around each of these religions the feminine voice was largely cut off and when i talk about the feminine voice i'm not talking about the voice specifically of women although obviously in those times um, many women did have their voices shut down but it wasn't just the women you know the, it was irrespective of, of gender but when i talk about the feminine voice it's the voice of intuition the voice of creativity it's it's a freedom of expression um, and not even just the voice itself, but also dancing. These are things that have come through us. And in terms of the chakra system, if you're familiar with that, it's, it's part of the, the throat chakra. This is connected to not only the throat, but also our, our arms, our hands, the way that we express ourselves for this part of our body. Um, there's also the, the inner knowing. This is the yeah part of the feminine, just that sort of that knowing and the connection that we have with the voice of nature, of Mother Earth, of all of the beings with whom we share this planet, both those seen and unseen. So there was this this sort of disconnect that happened, um, particularly in the sort of Western part of the world. My knowledge of different parts of the world is, yeah, I've, I've Growing up in Europe, I have a much deeper understanding of what happened here, but I know that this is not just uh, centered in, in Europe, but this is something that has happened globally at various points in time that um, societies have formed, cultures have formed where they have cut, off, cut people off from that really essential, creative, expressive aspect of ourselves. So... Traditionally, there were songs, stories, sometimes stories within songs, but these these things that were passed down from one generation to the next, and they were what gave people a sense of belonging. They gave them an understanding of how they fit into the cycle of things. It gave them a sense of understanding of their lives in the bigger picture, their connection with nature, their connection with with one another with the cycles with the seasons with with their ancestors where they've come from and a lot of these stories and these songs were literally taken away from people um so for example the the banning of of songs particularly in the the western world for example the way the church 
essentially just yeah made, made it unsafe for people to continue practicing for example like pagan beliefs um these things kind of became a little bit intertwined with religion but essentially they certain things were not allowed anymore um if we look at for example the inquisition um as it started in 12th century france with the the repression of the Qatars, who were a group of people I actually live in france in southwestern france so there's a very rich history here um but they had a very different way of looking at religion to the catholic roman catholic church and because it did not meet with the agenda of the catholic church those people were silenced they were literally could not could not practice they were being forced to convert or to lose their lives um not far from where i live there is the site of um a castle called Montségur, which was supposedly um yeah it was the very last standing point of the qatar people and it said that um so the castle was under siege for i believe it was many months um and eventually the they had to surrender they couldn't hold out anymore and the the people who were of the qatar faith were given the choice either to um to to convert to christianity or to to die and there were many who who died and there is the story that um as they came down from so this this um castle it's on a sort of mountain and as they came down from the castle they were singing and they went onto this wooden pyre and were burnt to death and they literally went singing to their deaths which i think is a very you know what we no one's ever really going to know if it's true or not but i think it's a very powerful story of the power of the voice to continue to affirm what 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 we believe and to stay really strong within our own truth so you know this period and it continued for a long time if we look at the history of the witch hunts for example um particularly you know groups of women you know women were the storytellers and i know you know it's not that men weren't but you know there was if you think of a way that a mother nurtures her child she very often she sings to her child she she tells the child stories and the women would be coming together in circles and sharing their wisdom and their knowledge and their songs and this literally became unsafe it could be a death sentence even for one woman to talk with another woman so we can also look at North America for example um and also the yeah Australia so the the aboriginals in Australia and the native native americans um or the native people of the of the americas the way that they were treated and they had their their stories taken away from them their songs taken away from them all of those things that helped them to piece together their identity and their understanding of life and we see that you know this is still we're collectively still experiencing the impact of this it is huge the impact um you know not only for for those peoples but um yeah worldwide we look how yeah the repression of the voice even though here in in europe we have or the western world certain or certain parts of europe we have a lot more opportunity to speak our truth but um still there is this this huge repression of the voice in so many ways in so many places um so many parts of the world where women literally do not have a voice or um anyone who does not fit into a specific category that is is in line with what is is deemed as cracked they don't have a voice um you know there's so many people in the world who were part of minority communities that without a voice they can't you know even express openly their sexuality or their gender or their genetic makeup and there's um 
you know, also the, the devastation that's inflicted on Mother Earth. Like nature is so clearly speaking to us that this needs to stop and yet we're still repressing that voice. Nature is speaking and still human beings are still continuing to inflict that devastation. We look at war that's happening at a mass scale still across the planet. World leaders making choices with devastating consequences for the people of their countries and they're meant to be taking care of the people but they're not giving the people a voice um, but we need to consider that it all starts with ourselves if we want to make a big impact a big change in the world we need to start by looking inside ourselves we need to start listening to how do we speak to ourselves I just mentioned about you know the the impact of war but what is happening within ourselves how often are we at war within ourselves how often do we doubt ourselves how often do we speak words to ourselves that are not building us up not encouraging us to live our full potential but instead criticizing what stories do we tell ourselves? What stories do we tell ourselves about ourselves? What stories do we tell ourselves about others? What stories are we repeating over and over and over to others? Because they're really powerful. Words are very, very powerful, whether thought or spoken. And the spoken word amplifies the, the impact of, of what we're saying. It's all energy in the end. We need to ask ourselves, you know, how often do we speak our truth? I mean, so many times I've come across people who, um, women in particular, who have told me that they, they very often feel this kind of clenching, this tightness in their throats, um, this sense that they can't express truly what they want to say. You know, if we look back at those who raised us and um, particularly mothers and grandmothers but you may also have had the same experience with fathers grandfathers uncles but certainly you know very very clear is with the feminine line um how often have our mothers grandmothers aunts etc moved through life without having their own voice how often have we seen them taking care of everybody else's needs first but not actually taking care of themselves how often have we seen them actually saying no to something that we can see wasn't right for them if you're one of those who has grown up seeing the women in your life able to really claim their power and claim their space then i think you're one of the lucky few because this seems to be a pattern that goes back so far and that is still so present within within the older generations and we're carrying this but we are living in this beautiful time when we have the possibility the potential to change this and we are we are changing it which i think is so so powerful more and more people are standing up and really using their voice for for good in the world and saying no when something doesn't sit right and making their boundaries clear and um yeah i was thinking earlier today just the the impact that one person speaking their truth can have if you imagine a room full of people being told that something is a particular way or something needs to be done a certain way and you've got a room with a large number of those people in that audience saying like, no this isn't right for me but a lot of them you know or pretty much all of them not able to stand up and say that but all you need is one person in that space who has the courage to stand up and to say no this isn't right all you need is that one person and by that one person having the courage to stand up you can pretty much guarantee there are going to be one or two others who are going to start standing up with that person saying, actually, you know what? I agree with this person. I don't agree with what's being said. And very quickly, this has a ripple effect and it can affect everybody in that space. And it's just the same that when we work with our voices, when we really tune into ourselves, we tune into our truth, we create clearer boundaries for ourselves 
we find the courage to speak up, this has a ripple effect on those around us. It affects our families and it affects our communities. So it goes out, you know, you throw a stone into the, the middle of a lake and those ripples continue without end. Even when they reach the shore, it's still shifting what's there. It's still shifting the sand or the stones or whatever is in, in the vicinity around it. It's still shifting far, far beyond what we can see, not to mention everything deep, deep, deep below. So what else with the voice? The singing voice. This is the big one for me because of my past experience working as a singing teacher. And one of the things that got me started with my work with offering, offering the work that I do is because so often in the past when I said to people that I was a singing teacher or that I sang, immediately I would hear the words, I can't sing. And right there, the voice is cut off. So, so many people are cut off from their voice. And yet the voice, the singing voice, is this incredibly powerful tool that we all possess that has the power to make massive shifts in, in how we feel in our bodies. When you start to sing, instantly you change the way that you breathe and the breath is so immensely important, essential for our well-being. It makes huge shifts within us. And when we create sound, it creates shifts inside our bodies. It's shifting the, the frequencies within us and within the space, well, with the space around us. So I think, yeah, well part, of, well, part of my mission, I know, is to support others also in reclaiming their singing voice. And it's not about standing up on stage or sit, standing in a crowd and singing for others, but it's about claiming the voice as your own and realizing just how much joy and power you can get because your, your singing voice is it's encoded with all these beautiful healing frequencies so coming into into that really really can shift totally shift how you feel how you feel about yourself how you feel about your day part of the voice is also about learning to truly listen because how often do we truly listen? How often do we truly listen to what our bodies are telling us? To all of the little tiny signals? How often do we really trust in our intuition? Again, intuition very often it will be working through your body. There'll be these little signals in your body that will tell you not to do something. Or that may say, go in that direction or just give you all these little different signals, but how often do we really listen to it and trust in it? On my personal path, learning to follow my intuition has it's been incredible. And I'm still working at it every day. It's something that I, yeah, I need to work with and to be aware of, to be aware of the difference between listening really to what my intuition's telling me and what my head tells me. But our intuition is, is so powerful when we start to listen to it. It can really make huge shifts in our in our lives, in the way that we live our lives, and in the enjoyment that we get from our lives. We also need to learn to to really listen to the needs, the emotions that lie between our words. Um, very often, we're very cut off from what we truly feel. Um, I know that that's sort of one of my my things that I've really had to work with is to to feel safe enough to hold myself in a space so that I really listen to how I feel and really honor how I feel, which for some people they can do it very easily, but I know there's a lot more people who are not able to always really truly honor their emotions or to even connect with them at all. And in communication, you know, when we're communicating with others, really what we're, we're doing is we're communicating needs. Those needs can be as simple as just the need for connection with another human being. And it might have nothing to do with the words that are being said, but it's that seeking for connection. 
or it can be something very practical. Um, it can be so many different things, but learning to really listen, listen to, to ourselves and to listen to others because so, so much is said without words. Words are just the smallest part of communication. When we really start to learn to listen, to listen with our hearts, this makes all the difference in the way that we, we interact with others and in our relationships. So for me, the voice is really, or the, the journey with the voice, it's about having the courage to listen mm -hmm. to the little internal nudges that we feel and to take those sometimes little and sometimes very big leaps of faith that our inner voice is telling us to take. It's about finding the courage to step beyond our self-imposed limitations, trusting our inner guidance, stepping away from what causes us pain and stepping into our power. It's about reclaiming our right to have a voice and above all else to listen to that voice, to listen to our own voice, even if we feel unheard by others. Because there are going to be times when we speak and it doesn't matter how we speak, doesn't matter what tools, techniques we use, ultimately there are going to be people at some, some points in our lives who are not going to hear us because they just do not have the capacity to. But the very, very important thing is that we are able to hear ourselves, to hear the needs, to hear the desires, to hear the wisdom with our own voices. And another part is really about reclaiming our singing voices and the ancient healing wisdom that's encoded within them because our, our ancestors, and particularly our ancient ancestors, they really knew their stuff. They really, really understood the power of the singing voice. And believe me, it is powerful. So the voice, this is why it's important to me because for me, the voice is, it's so much. It comes in so many different forms. It's not just the speaking voice or just the singing voice, but this whole, yeah, this whole range of different, different aspects and learning to reconnect with that, to, to truly listen is such a powerful journey. Understanding why we are not listening, why it's important to listen. And I truly, truly believe that the more connected we are individually with our own voices, the more that we can truly love and honour our own voices, the more we're going to start listening to one another and the more we're going to start to respect and honour one another. And ultimately, for me, the big thing is the more we're going to respect and honour the voice of Mother Earth because we have this one planet and we all know that we, we have only a certain amount of time to turn around what we've created. In the end, Mother Earth will keep going, but whether or not humanity gets to remain a part of that, yeah, that's still to be seen, but we each have a choice. And I do believe that, yeah, what happens ultimately is gonna largely be affected by whether or not we are connected with our voices. So what about my own journey? I'll just share today a little bit with you about it. Why, why the voice for me? So as I mentioned at the beginning, voice has been part of my journey my whole life long. I grew up in a family where whoever shouted loudest was the one that got heard and that was definitely not me. I was very shy very introverted, very sensitive. And I, so often, I looking now, looking back, I see that there was so much in my life where I could see um, yeah, discordance with, with, for example, words that were being said or actions that were being taken and like the truth underlying them. So often people saying things that the energy said something very different. And it's only as a 
got older and started working with with energy and exploring the voice in a different way that I've come to really to truly understand this that along my journey I've gone from this very shy little girl who was scared to speak up and who was scared like a couple of times when I was young I, I had the opportunity to sing in front of people and I was terrified and I just could not do it and I somehow with with the right support I got past that I found the courage to use my voice um so much so that yeah I I became a singer and a singing teacher and that I do what I do today and the funny thing is that back in my in my 20s my early 20s when I was yeah, I was working with voice a lot. I wasn't hugely keen on performing. I didn't mind it, but it wasn't that thing that I really felt the need to to move forward with. Um, but the one thing was that, you know, singing in front of people was fine, but I remember holding a concert for my singing students and having to talk in front of the audience. And there was a last thing in the world that I wanted to do. So it's been quite a journey for me also to get to the point where I really trust in what I have to say and to understand the power in my voice and what I can do with my voice to help others to connect with their voice. Um, so that's a little bit about me and a little bit about the voice and the journey, the journey with voice and what the reconnected voice journey is. So in future episodes, I'm going to be talking with with others um, about the voice and yeah, what the voice is to them. And I'm really looking forward to sharing a lot more of this with you. So for now, I thank you very much for listening to the Reconnected Voice Journey podcast with me, your host, Francesca J. Littman. If you'd like to learn more about my work and the Reconnected Voice journey, you can visit my website, which is www.francescajlittman.com. You can join my Reconnected Voice journey group on Facebook, and you can also find me on other social media platforms using my name, Francesca J. Littman. And you'll also find me on Instagram with the name Reconnected Woman. So tune in next time for more Reconnected Voice inspiration. Reconnected Voice Journey Podcast Your voice is your medicine